Yo, yo. Is everything good? I think so, actually. All right, all right. Zoom, zoom is, zoom is. Ah, where's my, where's my soundboard? Where's my mask? All right, let's get a, wait, let me put on the shades. Let me put on my mask. All right, how's this go again? You do this. Oh, there we go. Is that, am I wearing, I never know when this mask is on right. Okay, I like this. All right, where's the sounds? Wait. Get the energy up, energy up, energy up. There we go. All right. Y'all know the deal. It's a Tripod Podcast. Episode 59. I am I am almost sure about this. Um, I have to look it up because I, I feel like that's that's one of my. Uh, I'm, I would be so scared if I got the podcast episode wrong. Um, uh, come on, come on, look. yes, fifty nine episode fifty nine. We're almost in the sixties. We're almost killing it. Um, shout out to everybody listening on Spotify. Shout out to Apple. Uh, shout out to people watching on YouTube. Um, you know, y'all are the real OGs watching on YouTube. That's, that's, that's commitment. Um, I know y'all can make fun of my hairline, my hair right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I, yes, my hair, when, if this podcast like blows up or anything, they're going to like, people are going to go to these episodes and be like oh my gosh look at his hairline like yes i know i'm not a barber i just i just cut 95 okay 95 percent of men have a weird hairline that barbers make look amazing jalen rose doesn't just okay i'm taking this mask off because i'm gonna drink coffee too jalen rose without his barber he wouldn't have a career okay so <laughs> let's just <laughs> let's just make things clear okay um, so go ahead. Yes, I'm insecure about it. Make fun of me. All right. <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, what I want to get into, you know, music, man. Last episode was all about sports. I'm kind of, well, I have one sport tangent I want to get into, but let's get straight into it. Y'all, y'all know me. Y'all, y'all know me. I am a Drake Avenger. I, it's time, it's time to get in formation to defend, <laughs> to defend Drake haters. Um, I hate how it's like trendy now to hate on Drake on Twitter. It's just like, I get it. But at the same time, I'm just like, uh, why? <laughs> why? Why are y'all doing this to me? But it is, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, if you, if you live under a rock, um, Drake came out with a, a quote unquote mixtape. Let's, let's grow up and say album. Um, and what's it called again? I, I, this is like the first Drake album that I just cannot remember this album name. Cause I'm just like, this is such a weird name for it. Um, dark lane demo tapes. Now I will admit one thing. It was so hard for me not to like go on social media or like tell my friends of like, Oh, <laughs> I've known all the, I've known half of these songs for like five, six months, which I have half of these songs I've listened to before just because I am a weird Drake hipster fan. I know all the leaks. I do this for all the rappers. I, I do this for little babies, the, the baby. Uh, <laughs> I love saying these names, uh, little baby, uh, future, like all these guys, this is their thing. Now that's the thing to do. Now they leak it to the like day one fans it's such a weird rap trend right now they they leak music to their day one fans because they know we're gonna soak it up we're gonna pick it up and they see i think they see our reaction to it maybe like to if the loyal fans like it then they're gonna release it to the public 
I think that's the trend now. So, you know, these songs, When to Say When, Chicago Freestyle, Desires, um, Pain, 93, um, War, we've all known about. Like, all Drake people, all all rap fans know these songs already. So, like, that's why it's, that was it's a little bit hard for me to just be like, I didn't want to be that guy, because I hate those guys. So, I wasn't going to become that. Like, yeah, I, I've known about that song for, like, <laughs> years especially with uh, uh pain 93 i've known that song for a year <laughs> like, <laughs> it's getting so much attention because like cardi's verse is just agreeably horrible i don't think it's like trash again it's it's popular to hate right now it's popular to hate on cardi um it's so confusing though because I thought that was gonna be Cardi's song featuring Drake, but it's, I don't know what Cardi's doing right now. He says he's he's been dropping albums. I don't know. He's a weird guy. Him and Uzi are just some weirdos. <laughs> it's just, the other generation, the generation below me, loves them. Um, like I don't know how Uzi went from like my generation to like below my generation but it happened um so yeah i i i've known about pain 93 for a whole long time um yeah so basically i didn't want to be that guy so i was just kind of off social media i didn't want to be because all my friends know like i'm a drake dude i'm a drake avenger what's a, what's another word for avenger uh superhero ah whatever so basically this quote unquote mixtape slash album was like a little just hey way just like hey here you go have fun and he's going to release an actual studio album this summer um makes sense actually because Drake has been leaking so many songs. I don't know what it is, but he's like taking that rap trend to like on steroids. So I'm, I don't know what to expect for this album. It's kind of weird that he's doing that because he usually has like a huge single going towards your album. And so with it, like, you know, with this album coming out this summer, probably August, I would say it's not gonna be like June or July. It's too soon like August, I mean, I expect like his single to come out next month. Like that's what's a little surprising. People just don't drop albums without having like a banger single, you know, like a single single right before it. So I thought Tusi Slide was going to be that single, which hey, it's number one song. So I don't, I don't know. Um, Whenever on Spotify and Apple, y'all hear 10 second pauses, it's me drinking coffee. It's not me just like not knowing what to say. So, <laughs> um, let's get into it. Let's let's decipher this album just a little bit. Not, I don't, I'm just a I'm a casual fan. Okay, I'm not I'm no I'm no Anthony Fantano. I'm uh, I'm not gonna give it a rating. Um, uh, let's get into it. First impression, I was like. I remember, uh, what was it, 3 p.m. that Thursday, right uh, when the album was dropped later that night, I was I was on the E streets, and I was looking on the Reddits, and I was like, and so apparently the only reason we found out so early about this album, like eight hours early, it was supposed to be a surprise album. It, it was supposed to be. But, I don't know, some weirdos shazammed these, like, I guess – they shazam some of these songs and it pulled up like oh this is going to be on an album and so people were like freaking out so i was like what is going on at first i didn't believe it but like everyone was shazamming i didn't take the time to do that because i'm like that's kind of weird um so that's the only re that like that that's how we found out we are bored humans <laughs> we who in the world just like shazammed one of these songs and was like oh this is gonna be an album like the casual fan would just be like, oh, this is from that album, you know? So, 
I, I remember like telling all my people, I was like, yo, the streets of sand, Drake's dropping an album or something. And the more people kept doing it, the more I was like, wow, this actually, it makes sense. The, like the theory I was seeing was like, he, he, the reason why, the reason behind all these leaks is because he's just releasing a ton of music this year. Last year, he didn't really do anything. So it makes sense. I, it, you know, rap is so microwave music now. So it's like, I get it. Just, just throw us music. People, we will consume it. Um, and Drake knows this. It's all business. It's all business. Um, so it is kind of odd, but I think he's just wanting to release so much music now. Um, I like it. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Um, let's go into my favorite tracks. The, my favorite tracks have already been released. Let, let's just, my two favorite tracks. Okay. Let me just say this. My three favorite tracks, like top tier, two of them have already been out. I've already listened to them. I've already like loved them. And then the other song, let's talk about the song that brand new that I've never known about. The, the D4L, Future, Drake, Young Thug. Love the song. It's such a, you can tell the chemistry. It's not like that Future has a verse, Drake has a verse, Thug has a verse. It's literally just like eight bars here, four bars there, 12 bars there. It's like, oh, you can tell they were in the studio making this track together. Like it wasn't like, sent in or it might have been sent in but like they wanted to have that chemistry i like it i like it i like it i, I want to see that more i want to see that more um okay let's talk about these other two songs desires and chicago freestyle <sighs> chicago freestyle is the most beautiful rap song ever <laughs> and, in 2020, let me take my shades off. Let me let me just take my shades off. Let me. It's time. I don't want to talk about this album the whole episode. Is it really? No, I'm not doing this. We'll stop later. Chicago Freestyle is the most beautiful song, and it's not even Drake. I mean, Drake does his thing, but Giveon. It might be Giveon or Giveon. I'm just, I'm gonna go with Giveon. The hook. I my like see I'm spe I'm speechless with this song. <laughs> the hook is just so beautiful. The music video with the song is amazing, by the way. Um, I the first line sets the whole tone of the song. Two thirty, baby, won't you meet me by the bean? I didn't know about this that lyric until like I was like wait Chicago the bean two third oh this is he wants to meet someone in downtown Chicago and the by the bean it's cold oh this this can get you in your feels if you if you don't watch yourself oh 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 it gives you a fuzzy feeling man it's just let me let me just let me just read the hook 2.30, baby, won't you meet me by the bean? Too early, maybe later you can show me thanks. <laughs> you know what it is whenever I visit. Windy City, she blown me kisses, though. No, she's, she blown me kisses, no. 30 degrees, way too cold, so hold me tight. Will I see you at the show tonight? Will I see you at the show tonight? <laughs> this is give me on, man. Give me on. This made me a give me on fan from the jump. I like he dropped an album last month. I was on that. I was on that. Give me on is like a cooler Sampha, right? Sampha, Sampha, Sampha. Um, 
and Drake does his thing. Drake gives is giving me the vibe in the song of like, man, he's in his mid thirties. He's nowhere even getting close to being married. It's just like, man, at this point, I, I'm like, Drake, find a girl, bro. You're almost 40. Wow. Yeah. He, well, he's 34. No, 33. He's 33. Okay. He's not super old, but you know, he's, it, he's been so, he hasn't had like a relationship. Like I can't really think besides like Rihanna, he was never with Nicki Minaj. Like he's never had like that girl. I was like, Whoa, that's Drake's ex besides Rihanna. Yes, of course. But like, you know, the song is all about, man, he's, Drake is just kind of, he, he gives me that vibe of, like, he's just kind of giving up a little bit on, like, love, which is kind of good for every, every guy to just, like, kind of go through, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm so, this is not toxic. It's just, like, how it is. It's just life, especially at his age. When he's 33 and you still haven't had, like, a, like a you know, long-term public relationship, of course, that's going to, like, kind of hit you or, like, you know. Um... So, oh, this song. I want to go to the other song real quick. Desires with Future. The last part of this song, man. This, again, it's with the whole Drake vibe. I, Drake is, like, going through this, like, time of just reflection, I think, because he's publicly shown his baby now. He's kind of moved on from that. Now he's just trying to find like a normal girl just like just just yo i'm drake <laughs> i'm um uh, one of the most impactful musicians maybe he's too famous too rich to find love i, I can't even like fathom all that thinking <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just passionate about music y'all i'm it's just like okay let me let me re okay Let's go through this the, the other song, Desires. Verse three, the last verse of the song. It's like the outro a little bit. Drake says, ooh. <laughs> he says, ooh, shawty, you tried it. Voice getting, well, I, I lost the rhythm. Okay, voice getting filled with entitlement. Why would you tell me those lies? And why would you make it so bold to my face? face why are your stories all over the place whole lot of secrets friends don't keep safe where does your friends all go i can't solve your problems you say your problems never needed solving champagne poppy champagne poppy let me just keep resuming I was too good for you. Should have stayed solid. Nice guys always finish off where they started. Oh my goodness. This, this. Deja vu. You wanted things and you got them. Deja vu. I wanted to smoke and I got it. Deja vu. Deja. Deja. Oh. That <laughs> just where do we start? <laughs> Two lines of this this part. <laughs> Drake's done. Drake's done with love. You can I you can just tell. He's done with the feelings. He is just done. He's over women. He's over. Why would you tell me those lies? Why would you make it so bold? He's he's fed up. He's fed up. Um he says, I can't solve your problems. He said, your problems never need to solve them. <sighs> that, that's, a, that's a line, man. Oh, my goodness. And then this part. Nice guys always finish off where they started. When you think about that, oh, my gosh. And this isn't – my generation is, like, ruined the whole nice guys term. Nice guys as in, like, just genuine – You know, it's good to be a nice guy when you're, like, in your 30s. You know, right? Okay, this is weird to talk about, honestly. Okay. Nice guys always finish off where they started. Saying, like, the genuine dudes, when they go, like, uh, you know, when they go through relationships, 
relationship's done, they finish, they just keep on going. And I don't know, in Drake's perspective, nice guys always finish off where they started. The nice, like the these genuine dudes are not worried about, like, you know, dudes aren't worried, or like, you know, non-desperate dudes aren't worried about, oh, girl dumps me. Okay, I'll be sad in the, for a day or two. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> like, it's just like it's just a guy mentality. It's just, you just keep going. And so Drake's maybe saying that perspective, maybe that girl or something, or like the girl in the past of like way back then is wanting to like catch up. There's so much interpretation in this. Yeah, so oh, those verses, man. Oh, lyrical, lyrical. Um, yeah, man, this. Uh, how, how, we're 20 minutes in. Oh my god. Okay, we're changing the topic. We're not doing a whole Drake episode. <laughs> I'll conclude by saying this. I don't know if it's his worst or best. I don't. I'm not ranking it right now. Okay. First impression. It'll be in the lower tier, of course. Of course, we're comparing this to like nothing was the same. Take care. Okay. Okay. This is a mix of like if you're reading this, it's too late. And like Scorpion, it's like a mix of those two. So uh, I'm gonna keep. T I like Time Flies. Real. I need to hear these songs like outside. I I, I need to hear these songs out. But uh, yeah, I, I like this man. I like this. It's it's good to have new Drake in the streets, like actual his music. So. Oh. All right, done with that. The other musician I want to give some love to. Let's, let's, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but like I've had other guests on the show. They, they don't know. I don't, they just really, I don't know. They don't know about the group like this. Griselda. West Side Gun. Benny the Butcher. Butcher. Conway the Machine. Those, okay. West Side Gun, Conway the Machine, Benny the Butcher, they make up this group called Griselda, but they also, those three have their own solo career. So it's like, I was, when I'm telling people about them, they always say like, they're like the Migos, where, you know, they've done, they've done their group things, but they've all had like a solo album. They've been terrible, except, except for Offset. But like with Griselda, I thought, you know, listen to Griselda, love their music, their album last year, if I I was so late to that album. It came out late November. I didn't know about it until like February of this year. That album is hard, man. It's it's like it's real, man. I, I hate saying that because I everyone says their music is real, but the passion in their lyrics is different. They were all known, like, you know, it's hard to, like, say these guys were, like, or, like, it's hard to tell where these rappers, drug dealers, like, Pusha T is, like, really kind of pulled that off. Um, but these guys, it's, it's tough, man. It's that New York just, like, grime, tough music. Um, the, so, back to my point, whenever I was listening to them with Griselda, when they were and their lead, like their main dude, West Side Gun, he released an album last month. And that convinced me. I was like, I am officially a fan because any group can be good. Uh, like uh, three people can make a great album. But when they both make great solo albums, that puts you on another pedestal. That puts you on another level. Like they're for real. They didn't, they were, that shows they can do it by themselves if they want to. They don't need any, they don't need each other. So I was like, man, it's, mm, mm, it's, the, just the, some of the lines in their verses, it's just huge. Just makes you, it makes you just want to just hustle and just grind for like, <laughs> 
Whew, I, I want to say some of these lyrics, or I'm, I can't remember some of them, but like, oh, May Store. Oh, okay. I gotta, I gotta find this one verse. This one verse is like my favorite. Um, Doctor Birds is tough. It, I was, you know, with it being like the New York grind and stuff. Like, I was really looking forward to the that scene. Because New York rap has been lacking in like my generation. So I've been wanting someone. And that's why I was like kind of really sad about Pop Smoke's death. Because he was bringing up New York wildly. So like with Pop Smoke, with the, like, you know, he was a youngin, 20 years old. And these dudes, Griselda, they're in like their late 30s. It was just like, it was a great, great balance. Um, Um, oh, my favorite verse in this, my favorite, one of my favorite lines, Conway says, race to the top. Who want to race me? I don't chase money. Money chases me. <sighs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, it just pierces your heart is just like, mm. I was making the, I was making the, this is hard phase, the whole album. I'm trying to think, even 50 Cent is on this album, and he sounds great, <laughs> which is hard to do. Uh, uh, Let's see, maybe there's one line maybe in Moselle. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, trying to, but yeah, the money chases me line. I was like, my gosh, that is, uh, that is hard. So I was very uh, a fan of all that. So very happy to see that. So. All in all, man, Griselda is the real deal. I know not many people in the South really know that much about him. So that's why I need to like mention it. Oh, just that, that, that group is something, man. Oh, it just, oh, wait, 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 one second. Oh, I was curious because I was like, how do these people do concerts? Their concerts are tough. I would be legit scared to go to a Griselda, Griselda concert because it is just like tough. Like no one is like, you know, no one's like cracking jokes. It's like the real deal. And, you know, it's awesome. Like the audience, it was all types of people. It was all people from like gang members to people in suits, um, just normal everyday office people. Just it's such a because this album, the, the whole concept is just working hard, working smart, being business savvy, which is something that is like everyone needs to have. And so it doesn't matter what you're trying to be in life, you need that that business savvy, that street smart mixed with like working hard. You need a very good balance of each other. You need to have a mindset of a drug dealer, a gang member, or to maybe incorporate that into your office work. It, it's, I know it's really hard to explain, but it's just like having that mentality really helps. It really helps because you're just – you're just constantly thinking. You're constantly trying to go on the next level. So, yeah, with this music, it's just, like, it's bigger than music. It's just, like, a mentality. It's just, like, the whole, like, money chases me line. 
that's a great mentality to have of like, don't be so, you know, don't chase these butterflies. Let it come to you. Let it just like, let things come to you. You keep working hard. The money's going to come to you. The people are going to come to you. Sometimes you just have to be chill, laid back, and not be too aggressive sometimes. So I went on a little tangent, but that's just how oh, this music is just hardcore. It's boom. <laughs> it's just whew, it's nice. So, you know, I like it. I like it. Um, you know, people keep saying the baby has the same flow, which, by the way, I love the baby's album, Rockstar with Roddy Rich. Eh, I wish I made a huge mistake by not putting Bop, the baby song Bop, as my number one song. I'm still blasting that song. I, I had I put Peach by Kevin Abstract as my number one song, but. No, Bob. Bob is it? It's just that it's, it came out too late, so I was just like, should I put this as number? It, it was number three, so I thought that was high enough. But I was like, nope. Should have been number one. So, yeah. Um, also, I want to get into this. Isaiah Thomas is getting a lot of media love right now, or media attention. I've kind of had a little breakthrough with Isaiah Thomas of like, oh, like the real IT, Pistons, not the Celtics guy, Pistons, Isaiah Thomas. I never thought of him as like a, I will admit, he was not in my top 20 NBA player of all time list. This, this little documentary has really um, changed that opinion. He is now in my top 20. Did not realize how huge the Pistons were. I knew they were, I'm, I'm, of course, I don't know they're big, they're back-to-back -back champs. But the year surrounding, they are so close to being four-time straight champs. They are, they went to the finals three straight years and then lost to MJ in the finals, East finals, which, hey, that's kind of a big, kind of a good team to lose to. So I started thinking, I was like, why is Isaiah Thomas so, like, disrespected? And then I came to comparison. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I knew he wasn't – he wasn't on the dream team. People have all – I think this next episode is really going to clear that up. I don't think he was on the dream team, 92 dream team, because no one liked him. So it's almost like who else is really not really liked in the media, but is a great all time player right now? James Harden. James Harden loses to the greatest, has lost to the greatest teams of all time three of the last five years. I think maybe four of the last five years. But he gets this disrespect of like, He's not that good. He flops in the playoffs. Well, yeah, he's playing the greatest team ever. He gets eliminated by them every year. It's just. You know, it's just. That's why in a weird way in 2017 or 2018. Yeah, 2018. I kind of wish those that Rocket team beat the Warriors in the West Finals. Chris Paul didn't get hurt because that, that would have gained so much more respect for James Harden um, by beating the greatest team ever. <laughs> so, and we're really going to look back at his career and say he's a one time MVP. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so, that's why I made the comparison. Isaiah Thomas was the James Harden in back then. James, or what, what, James Harden is Isaiah Thomas of now. So, um, yeah, so that, that was a good 
that was a revelation I just like had. That was like, whoa. It's, like, and I also I think my generation's perception about Isaiah Thomas really got messed up because of his management with the New York Knicks because he he was trash. So I guess my generation was just like, well, what do you know about basketball? So next I probably want to investigate like how good was like Joe Dumars and uh I think they had Mark Aguirre, former Maverick. I know Bill Lambert was good, but was he like actually good, like basketball good? Was he like the Draymond Green of back then? Of like he's just gonna mess everything up, you know? Was he just like in the right position, right time? You know, I don't want to like disrespect Bill, but that's what it seemed like. He was like more known for his personality than anything. No, let's look that up right now. Um, I think that'll be the last thing I'll talk about. Uh, search web. Bill Lambeer stats. I'm going to guess this might be horrible. Maybe in his prime, he was a 14.10 uh, rebounder guy. Uh, he was an all-star in the early 80s? Wow, he was like kind of out of his prime. Wow, I was very accurate. <laughs> 14 and 10. His best year was 16 and 13. 16 point, 13 rebounds. But yeah, when they won the championships, he was a 13, 9 guy. Man, he was past his prime when they won those. Kind of old. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just kind of, yeah, kind of weird. Um, let's see. I think that's about it, man. Well, we talk about Drake. Griselda, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas. That's a, that's a quality podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, NBA is trying to make a comeback. It's not going to happen. Um, my birthday is a month away now. Um, this virus is still weird. It's not letting me go outside. I don't like it. Um, all right, let's wait, wait. Let's, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of happy I'm, or blessed that I'm kind of in the, doing school, you know, a lot. All right, Song of the Week shout outs. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, song of the Week. Um, I'm going to say Rockstar, man. No, no, no. This is a Drake episode. Come on. We have to go uh, D4L. Drake feature Young Thug. The great chemistry on that song. Great chemistry. Uh, shout outs. Shout out to the Texas Tech president trying to get us to go back to school in the fall actually there on campus i don't know man i don't i don't i don't, I don't, hmm, hmm, I, don't, I, don't I don't know i don't know about that decision a little risky but uh yeah he was like on cnn i was like on my linkedin i was like oh he's on cnn i was like why is he on cnn <laughs> why is he on cnn this is weird um so yeah that's about it Shout out to that. Shout out to that guy. I don't even know his name. I don't even know who he, who he was until like this virus stuff happened. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Peace. Much love. And um, live in the moment. Peace. Stop recording. Shout out. Shout out. Shy fi the Shy Fi Podcast. <laughs>